ladies and gentlemen. Please help me welcome to stage OCCF President and CEO, Shelly Haas. Welcome, OCCF friends and family. We are so thrilled to have so many of you joining us live today, not in the same room, but live nonetheless. Uh, as of this morning, more than 420 of our nearest and dearest uh, have planned to join us. So we're so thrilled to be able to have this connection, even though it's virtual this year. Before we get started, I just want to take a moment to recognize all those who are impacted this morning by the bond fire, our neighbors and friends in Silverado and Majeska, and, and we want to um, give you our best for health and safety. I know some of our own board and staff are affected, and also just a huge gratitude to our Orange County firefighters who are keeping us all safe. So um, thoughts and prayers to everyone affected. As, as we join our time together today, you know, it feels so uh, strange not to be together, but we felt that the same love and energy and passion and connection that always happens at our annual meeting is needed now more than ever. So we are pulling out all the stops to try to make this as engaging and heartwarming as it always is. And I want to start with a thank you to Bill Podlick, hope you've logged on by now. Uh, I was having breakfast with him a couple of weeks ago and he was reflecting on how much music is always a part of setting the tone and the heart for our annual meeting. And I realized, wow, we had completely not thought about that, especially in these uh, times where we can't really have a live performance. But an idea was sparked to revisit one of the most touching, moving moments we've ever had with a performance at our annual meeting with the children from the Voices of Hope Children's Choir who joined us two years ago, fresh off their semifinal win with America's Got Talent. So please go back with me to that ballroom two years ago and, and let's enjoy again that beautiful performance. I've been staring at the edge of the water long as I can remember, never really knowing why. I wish I could be the perfect daughter, but I come back to the water no matter how hard I try. Every turn I take, every trail I track, every path I make, every road leads back to the place I know where I cannot go, where I long to be. See the line for the sky to see, it calls me, and no one knows. Those kids get me every time. I'm all emotional again, just like I was when they were with us two years ago. And we're so grateful. I think um, we all need a little extra hope these days. So thank you, Bill Podlick, for reminding me how important it is to uh, join our hearts together um, through, through music. 
Even though we're virtual, we still wanted to make sure we hit all the usual marks, even though we're in a very unusual mode. Uh, we're mostly live, so as I said before, whatever happens, happens. We have some parts just like we would at our regular annual meeting that are uh, on video. So we just hope you'll come along the journey with us and hope you have your favorite lunch in front of you. And like we always do, we're gonna start our program by hearing from OCCF's board chair. I assure you we did not compare wardrobe notes and yet we're so bonded that we did uh, dress alike this morning. Please welcome to the stage OCCF's board chair Reshma Block. Thank you so much Shelley. I'm incredibly honored to have served on OCCF's board for the last six years and to have become chair for the last year. And wow, what a year it's been. Um, in times of crisis, I truly believe that the nature of an organization is revealed. And at OCCF, this was certainly the case. We were called to rise almost overnight to meet the enormous challenges of serving the front lines of our community while still continuing to deliver extraordinary care and stewardship to our more than 600 funds. The staff and leadership had to make instantaneous changes to both their professional and personal lives in order to provide OCCF's work in a new remote mode. While launching two pandemic resilience funds at the same time and also rising to uh, the uh, enormous challenges and reckoning of the racial uh, justice and equity. As I'm sure many of you can attest to, this has not been a year for the faint of heart to be sure. With all its leader hardships though, this year has also brought incredible examples of resilience, generosity, and innovation. Stories that we want to be able to share with you today. But before we get to that, let me recognize at least um, our amazing Board of Governors. It's truly my great joy to serve with them. On my philanthropic journey and my journey with OCCF, it's been one of my greatest pleasures to work with these talented, passionary, and visionary, visionary in, uh, passionate and visionary individuals that serve on the OCCF board. Their diligence, commitment, and integrity make them invaluable assets to work with, but they're also incredible assets to our Orange County community as a whole. We asked our board members to reflect on the challenges and silver linings of 2020 and offer their hopes for the year ahead. So let's take a look at what some of them had to say. There has been so much personal and professional loss at levels that are unprecedented in our lifetime. But I have been amazed at the amount of empathy and support throughout the community. I hope the level of compassion, patience, and flexibility continues into next year and for years to come. In 2020, I'm most grateful for the love and caring of friends and family, new ways of communicating and learning, and pockets of hope as we make it through the pandemic together. Well, there's so much more to go. I believe our community has done the best it can uh, with the limited resource that we have to spread it across to different entities and organizations that need our help. We're truly blessed to have such an exemplary board to guide OCCF's work. In the plus column this year, we're also honored to welcome two new board members, Arnie Pinkston and Maria Mignon. Arnie, and, Arnie serves as the Corporate Vice President and General Counsel of Edward Life Sciences, while Maria recently retired from Chalk Children's Hospital as their Senior Vice President of Medical Affairs and the Chief Medical Officer. Both Arnie and Maria are very experienced leaders in both business and philanthropy, and we're really honored to have them join our board this year. And perhaps the greatest variable, and I think the most cherished asset in the Community Foundation's equation is the OCCF staff and leadership team. They've shared their tremendous enthusiasm, dedication, and expertise day in and day out with our donors, and with the hundreds of local nonprofit organizations with which we have the pleasure of working. You all have put your heart and soul into your work each day. This past year has required even more of you and you've risen to the occasion. Thank you staff and leadership. I would also like to recognize Shelley Haas for her exemplary leadership during this past year as well. I've seen firsthand the tremendous positive impact she has had in our community as president of OCCF. 
I couldn't be more proud to be working with Shelly, and I'm so grateful that she's at the helm of this organization. So thank you, Shelly. Finally, before I turn the podium back, I want to thank all of you for being here today. Thank you for taking the time to experience the Orange County Community Foundation's first ever virtual annual meeting. Most importantly, thank you for your engagement in our community for continuing to step up during a year of unprecedented challenges. During a year of unprecedented challenges, you've shown your dedication and it's been unwavering. Thank you for strengthening our community and to helping all of our residents. Shelley, back to you. Thank you so much, Reshma. I do just want to go on record that while we did draft Reshma's original script, that part about me was not uh, was not included. That she insisted on adding that. I just thought I would clarify that for the for the record. And of course, I want to add my heartfelt thanks to the unbelievable OCCF team. If I was proud of them a year ago, I just don't have any words left uh, for how I feel today. And a, a one special shout out to someone you met at last year's annual meeting, our then new EVP and COO, Tammy Tumbling, who had just joined us, which is about 30 days in. And uh, I cannot believe that this is what she has had to experience as her first year on the job and leading our operations and many of our teams. But she has risen to the occasion along with our whole team with such incredible grace and skill that um, I'm just more and more proud every day. For those of you who know me well, you know I'm a relationship person. So you can imagine how hard it's been this year not to be uh, with my team every day and, and in the office together. But my friend Tammy figured out a great solution Anytime she needs to talk, has a question, a problem she wants to talk through, uh, or an idea to share, I see this pop up on my phone uh, text thread. And it just brings a smile to my face every time. I don't know how she managed to create an emoji that looks so much like her, uh, but she's an inspiration uh, in every way and, and uh, so happy that she's part of our team, even though you won't see her here today. Uh, we want you to know that she is busy behind the scenes making it all, making it all happen. Well, Normally at the annual meeting, when you sit down at your seat, you get to see the unveiling of our annual report. This year, of course, we had to mail it ahead to your homes and I hope you received it. I got mine over Thanksgiving weekend and hope you've seen yours as well. You'll know then that our theme this year is love in action. And actually, while I'm giving some staff shout outs, I have to acknowledge our mighty communications team, Rebecca Wardell and Rachel Shelley, who not only created this extraordinary reflection of the past year and, the, and OCCF's work, but were the, uh, the magic behind the engine of this, uh, taking our whole annual meeting and um, creating it in a virtual mode. And we were promised that all the same love would come across virtually. We paid a little extra to the production company for that. So uh, you can let us know how we, uh, how we do by the end. Um, now we're going to welcome uh, our vice chair, Dan Bolar, together with our chair, Reshma Block, in a video giving you a little deeper look at this year's annual report. So please watch with me. Welcome to the OCCF 2020 Annual Report. The Orange County Community Foundation's mission begins with a call to inspire a passion for lifelong philanthropy. Philanthropy, defined by Merriam-Webster, is goodwill to fellow members of the human race through active effort. It's also defined as love of mankind. To us, philanthropy is love in action. This year, as a foundation, as Orange County residents and as human beings, we were challenged to meet critical moment after critical moment. A public health crisis, a renewed movement for social justice, and an economic recession all led into a deep well of community need. Through it all, we had the opportunity to show love in action as Orange County's community foundation. This annual report is more than a compilation of finances and statistics. It's a collection of success stories, living proof of putting our love for Orange County on the line. Early in the year, as businesses and schools shuttered, 
it was clear how severely this pandemic was straining the resources of local nonprofits. Organizations supporting our most vulnerable residents were feeling the pain of record increases in need. In addition to dwindling funds, in-person volunteers, and other resources, OCCF rallied quickly, galvanizing the philanthropic community to come to the aid of local nonprofits. The OC Resilience Fund awarded more than four million in grants to 164 nonprofit organizations in three short months. When Arts Orange County came to us to help answer the call from arts and culture organizations and artists themselves suffering devastating losses from closures and cancellations, we joined with them to launch the Orange County Arts and Culture Resilience Fund. But our work this year wasn't merely responsive. We're also hacking the impact game. Our Social Innovation Fund, a meeting of our sharpest minds in the business and nonprofit worlds, made new strides in supporting disruptive thinking to tackle our community's most pressing needs. And importantly, we publicly committed to build a more just and equitable community for all who call Orange County home. We're incredibly proud to have launched a racial justice and equity work group made up of my colleagues on OCCF's Board of Governors to examine our own understanding to advance equity in education and build economic opportunity for all of Orange County residents. And despite the turmoil of 2020, we've seen the power of love in action to drive change. We've answered the call. We've met the challenges with collective response and creativity. And we've seen the power of new, innovative thinking and bold commitments. All of this has been possible because of individuals like you. We invite you to review our 2020 annual report to learn more. Thank you so much, Dan and Rashma. And okay, you guys, you know how I don't follow script and I'm so hard to control like in person. It turns out same thing uh, live because I'm going to read a text I just got on my Apple Watch from my sweet former board member, Kelly Smith Holman in Santa Barbara, who just said, OMG, I love seeing you live. I think you should broadcast at least once a week. Don't, we're not doing that, Rebecca. Uh, great job. Love you. Well, I love you too, Kelly. Uh, you can just send me a text if you want, and maybe I'll have time to read more of them. Um, I told the protection people to just, go, we were gonna just go with the flow because that's how we do this. Well, um, you know, what we do at this annual meeting is we tell the stories of our community, and that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna start some storytelling with a, a very important part of OCCF's story, which is our role as a charitable steward of assets to benefit the Orange County community. Joining us to tell that part of the story is uh, the dynamic duo responsible for our fiscal oversight, uh, starting with OCCF's Chief Financial Officer, Tracy Branson, who for the last 29 years has trained her eagle eyes, former auditor mindset to every detail of OCCF's financial activity. And she's joined by our finance chair, Rashid Chantier, who uh, spends an incredible amount of his time making OCCF the best that it can be. And in his spare time, leads Deloitte's audit practice for the Southwest region. Rashid and Tracy are at OCCF's offices in Newport Beach, and they're joining us to uh, give you that part of the annual report story today. Thank you, Shelley. And what a year it has been. As a nation and here in Orange County, we continue to face the challenges of this global pandemic as it wreaks havoc on our economic and health systems. Hitting non-for-profits and the vulnerable population, they serve especially hard. In the midst of significant need, philanthropy not only rose to the challenge, but took the lead. I am incredibly honored to present this year's financial report because it clearly demonstrates our community's compassion and collective commitment to meeting the obstacles of the past year. I am very proud to share a landmark year of granting. In fiscal 2020, we broke the $100 million mark for the first time ever by awarding $102 million in grants and scholarships. Now our highest prior granting year was fiscal 2018 with $79 million in grant. Not only did we break through the $80 million, $90 million, we broke the $100 million mark all in a single year. 
This is a true testament to the extraordinary generosity of the Orange County community, rising especially in response to this pandemic in ways we could not have imagined. In fact, OCCF's generous donors granted a staggering $34 million in just the March to June period of 2020. And then in March and April alone, year-over-year -year granting increased 40% in response to this unprecedented need. This extraordinary generosity of Orange County donors has driven OCCF to rank in the top 2% in grant making among all 780 community foundations. Now this means we grant a greater proportion of our assets than all but 14 community foundation in the nation. Thanks to the passion of the donors we serve and our team's expertise in matching them with the organizations addressing the issues they care about the most. This year's granting brings OCCF's cumulative granting since 1989 to $732 million, a major step towards the ambitious goal we shared at last year's annual meeting to reach $1 billion in grants and scholarships awarded by 2024, which would be our 35th anniversary. Thanks to this incredible partnerships we have with all who are part of the OCCF family, we are well on our way to achieving this milestone. Thank you for all that you do to grow the good in Orange County and beyond, our extraordinary donors and nonprofits alike. And finally, even with our record-breaking granting this year, OCCF's assets reach $421 million, placing us in the top 7% in assets among more than 780 U.S.-based community foundations. Now to continue this beautiful story, over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Rashid. As Rashid highlighted, this year has been one of significant challenge for our nation and here at home in Orange County. We've seen disruption across nearly every aspect of our lives. Our national economy and financial markets were no exception. In the face of the extreme market volatility and economic uncertainty, OCCF's astute and diligent investment oversight has become more crucial than ever. Guided by a stellar investment committee and our investment advisors at Cambridge Associates, a global leader in foundation and nonprofit portfolio management, our investment pool continues to hit its marks, maximizing the value of assets available for granting for community needs and to fulfill our donors' charitable goals. Our strategy is designed for long-term growth with an emphasis on protecting the assets in down markets while capitalizing on upside returns when the financial markets rebound, which is what we're seeing play out now. In fact, our five-year annualized return at September 30th was 7.23%, beating our diversified benchmark by almost a half a percentage point. A particularly bright spot this year was our newly launched Environment, Social, and Governance Investment Pool. We piloted the ESG pool with OCCF discretionary funds and several donors interested in investing their funds assets in alignment with their charitable values, focusing on environmental impact and sustainability. The results of our pilot year have been extraordinary, returning 11.1% in earnings for the nine months ended September 30th. We are now welcoming all interested donors to join this pool. Please let me know if you want to learn more about this pool or any of the results we just shared. Through both the good years and the challenging ones like 2020, we are incredibly proud to steward your charitable resources. It is our privilege to be your partner in philanthropy. And back to you, Shelley. This is so great. I suddenly feel like a news anchor that's, you know, we're throwing out to the field and, and back to the news desk. Um, you might not ever get me off camera now that I've had this experience. Uh, well, thank you so much, Tracy and Rashid. We are just incredibly honored to have such uh, wise, diligent, and expert oversight of OCCF's uh, financial assets, both in our, our internal team and the incredible involvement and engagement of our, of our board. 
Well, so if you've been to the annual meeting before, we've all experienced the giant crush in that hallway outside the ballroom, probably you know a favorite of some and not so much of others, but at least it's a chance to connect, to see old friends, to catch up a little bit. And as you're walking into the ballroom and finding your table and chatting with your, your table mates, it's a great chance to catch up. And of course, we're, we're all sort of you know alone together in this mode, so we thought we'd ask some of our friends, donors, and nonprofit leaders to share a little bit about what this year has meant to them, some of their reflections, and we asked for selfie videos. We got so many. Thank you to all of you. We'll be able to use them throughout the next year, but I've got just a couple of them to share with you here today. In 2020 here at Kidworth, we are most grateful for the spirit of collaboration that we have seen throughout Orange County. While the year has brought its challenges, we have seen nonprofits linking arms, working together, the philanthropic community supporting uh, the work of the nonprofit sector so that we could serve the most vulnerable uh, in Orange County during 2020. I can't wait for the day where we are able to return the gift that our team has given us by being so nimble and adaptable and flexible and can do. I mean, that alone, it just accelerates innovation. Yeah, and interesting talents that we didn't know people had that could kind of come together. We were able to quickly pivot and do what we're here to do. People were thinking bigger than themselves. I mean, it was just phenomenal to see people truly collaborating and working together for the benefit of, you know, our, our community and each other. And that's something that, that I hope to, you know, I feel confident we'll continue in the coming years. We're inspired by the Community Foundation's ability to get resources out into the community so quickly and efficiently. We're so grateful to be associated with such a wonderful group of people. And if there's any silver lining to all of this, I think it would have to be spending more time with family. But is there such a thing as too much family time? Oh, Green family, you just, I can't get enough of you. Thank you to the Green family, uh, including the dog, and all of you who uh, shared your thoughts with us. I always think about what Julie Hill says, that Orange County is the best of the head and the heart, and I could not agree more. Well, let's now go to the center of our annual report, which really is the heart of our work this year in response to the global pandemic. In very early days in March, uh, we joined with St. Joseph's Community Partnership Fund, Charitable Ventures, and Orange County Grant Makers to form the Orange County Community Resilience Fund, which in just a very short period of time raised and then deployed more than $4 million to support the work of 164 local nonprofits working with our most vulnerable neighbors. So to Dig into that topic a little bit more. We're going to hear from OCCF's own Kathleen Otero and St. Joseph's Jason Loxamana. Please watch with me. It was a community response like none other to a crisis like nothing we've ever seen. In 2020, we were confronted with a pandemic that upended our collective way of life. For tens of thousands of our county's most vulnerable residents who were already in need, vulnerability became exponentially more urgent. For the nonprofits supporting these families and individuals, revenue shortfalls and a loss of hands-on volunteers hit them hard. Those losses were compounded by dramatic increases in the need for essential services among our county's most at-risk populations. We had to act quickly and with the best of both the head and the heart. We needed a collaborative philanthropic response to strengthen and support the community-based organizations who serve those groups. OCCF, St. Joseph Community Partnership Fund, Charitable Ventures, and Orange County Grantmakers immediately rallied to form the Orange County Community Resilience Fund. The outpouring of generosity and support for the fund was stunning. With $2 million raised in just 10 days and grants made shortly thereafter, followed by another 2.2 million received and grants made over a few short weeks. The fund allowed local foundations and individual and corporate donors to focus resources, 
share infrastructure, streamline efforts, and maximize impact in areas of greatest need. This unprecedented philanthropic response is testament to the compassion of our community and openness to innovative partnerships in a moment where the health and safety of our county was on the line. In addition to direct support, the Resilience Fund commissioned a comprehensive evaluation to capture the pandemic's impact on our communities and nonprofits. The evaluation data showed job losses and economic slowdowns disproportionately impacting lower income families, particularly communities of color and immigrants were affected. There were also concerns about evictions. Food banks reported up to 40 times increase in demand. Calls to 211 OC, a hotline providing referrals for essential needs such as food, more than doubled. Delayed preventive health care due to cost, availability, or concerns about COVID-19. And a need went on. After completing three rounds of granting, the fund remains open as a ready resource, monitoring ongoing needs among nonprofits and offering guidance for individual and foundation funders seeking to provide the most effective use of philanthropic resources. To the Orange County community, thank you. Thank you for your outpouring of generosity. Thank you for rallying around our most vulnerable. And thank you for keeping our community strong. All of those people who donated has been huge for Delhi Center. It's actually been able to help us feed people. It's as simple as that. Without those donations, we would have immediately closed down. But I have to tell you, every single dollar that was contributed went to help people survive through the worst part of the pandemic. Without your help, there would be much more hardship. And your contributions have helped people survive. It's because of you and your heartfelt donations, the love that you have shown to the community, that our residents are able to get through this pandemic. To all of those donors who contributed, you just can't uh, understand the impact that you've made. It has been huge. So just thank you so much for all of your help. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for sharing those thoughts. And Jenny, I don't think I could have said it any better myself. So many unsung heroes in the Orange County community who stepped up. Some of you, you know who you are, time after time after time to reach our most vulnerable neighbors. And I don't know that you will ever truly know the impact that you have had. And speaking of those who were moved by our the most vulnerable, the hungry, the homeless in our community, our next story is one that is just gives me so much joy to tell. It starts back again, early days in the pandemic, and I was at my desk in the office late one day, all by myself, <laughs> you know, lonely signing of grant checks, although that, that part was joyful, and my cell phone rang. I was so thrilled to have some human contact, and on the other end of the line was friend and colleague Scott Ullum, who is the CFO of Edwards Life Sciences, and he was calling with the seed of an idea and uh, you know, for, for the Edwards folks, immediately is about a minute too late for the way that they move. Uh, but I'll tell you in our case, it only took us about 24 hours to move that spark of an idea of some unused kitchen capacity at Edwards campus and connecting that to our families in greatest need in a partnership with Illumination Foundation and Mercy House that was sort of a match made uh, by our uh, OCCF colleague, Todd. Hansen. So I'm so thrilled that both Scott and Jacob could be with us here today to tell the story of, of what they figured out together. Well, Shelley, thank you very much. You know, by means of introduction, Edwards Life Sciences is a global medical innovation company focused on patients. And it's patients with structural heart disease and patients who need critical care monitoring. And we're headquartered right here in Orange County. Helping people is at the core of who we are. And one of the defining elements of our culture is our passion for and our commitment to charitable giving and philanthropy, both as a company 
and as individual employees. So we feel inspired and fortunate to support many of the not-for-profit organizations all around the world, and especially right here in Orange County. You know, the, the inspiration for this program was back when COVID first started, and there was a lockdown that hit Orange County, as we all remember. As a result, our on-site cafe, our restaurant where we feed our employees at our uh, headquarters campus, was really working at a fraction of normal capacity because so many of our employees were working from home. We saw a lot of people coming to campus who manufacture uh, our products, uh, but many of our employees were home. And as a result, the, the traffic and the volume in our cafe was, was reduced from normal. So we had about uh, half of our 50 plus cafe team members who were on paid leave at home, but they were anxious to get back to work. And, and when we came up with this idea, uh, they got really jazzed about the idea of being able to come in and help make meals for people in need. So it was a win, win, win idea. You know, the way this got up and running was when we first came up with this idea, uh, we called Shelly Haas and <clears throat> asked if the Orange County Community Foundation could help us make this a reality. And as we all know, they're experts at making things happen for our community. So per Shelly's usual style, she jumped on the idea immediately and uh, got us partnered up with Mercy House and Illumination Foundation. And we're fortunate today that we've got Jacob from Mercy House with us. Jacob, maybe you can share a little bit about how this worked from your side. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Jacob Mize and I'm the development director here at Mercy House. And yeah, um, I mean, this was truly a, um, a massive help to, to our shelters and the clients that we serve. Obviously everyone has been um, really impacted by COVID-19 and it's more than just, you know, you and I being impacted. It's um, some of the most vulnerable people in our society being impacted. Um, you know, Mercy House operates a variety of services ranging from outreach services and permanent housing. But one of our, um, I'd say one of the biggest uh, programs that we operate is the different uh, emergency and transitional shelters that we operate here in um, Orange County and really all of Southern California. And so all that to say, our shelter operations have been um, greatly impacted by COVID. And um, from everything from us not being able to have regular volunteers and food donations and um, us not, you know, our, our staff having to work more and our clients not being able to go out. And all of that has, has really created a very difficult situation in our shelters. So um, when OCCF and um, Edwards Life Science reached out to us to do meals, we were thrilled because A, it would it's an opportunity for um, folks to come in and, and um, provide a, um, a healthy, nutritious meal for our clients. You know, we we make food that is is easy to take on the go for our clients who are going to job interviews or going to the social security office or running around and doing all these things. So, um, the fact that Edwards was able to provide um, like salads and pastas and um, and some hot meals that um, normally our um, our clients don't get for lunch, and so um, we were really really appreciative. And um, I know that. Obviously, our staff was appreciative, but um, most importantly, our clients were really appreciative. And again, the the scope of what you were all able to provide was was really massive. And um, obviously, both for us at Mercy House and the shelters that we operate, but then also for Illumination Foundation. So, um, Scott, maybe you um, could speak to you know some more about the scope of of what you're all able to provide. Oh, sure. Thanks, Jacob. So the the team that really made this happen at Edwards is led by Tom Porter. And Tom runs all corporate services for Edwards globally. And he also oversees our cafe at our headquarters campus. And so Tom activated a team. And together, that team was involved in serving over 20,000 healthy meals to our hungry neighbors. And we feel like that's pretty special. Uh, this team also spent over 3,400 hours working with real purpose and inspiration to help others. And um, on top of that, we heard that other corporations took on uh, similar meal programs. And, um, and so seeing the secondary impacts of this and, and others uh, doing similar things and, and really forming a network of support at a time when there were so many people in need, was was pretty was pretty special. So we're again grateful for the partnership with OCCF. We're grateful for our our partnership with Mercy House and Illumination Foundation. Yeah, 
Um, and then Scott, uh, I think something you said there really, really stood out to me about like the, the bigger impact of what was able to be provided. I mean, so I was actually on site the day of um, that initial um, time that Edwards came out to drop off the food. And um, I actually got to have a conversation with um, one of the moms who was at our, our shelter, the link in Santa Ana. And she was saying how picky her sons are and how, you know, they, they get kind of tired of the same old thing. And, um, you know, they just have very um, unique uh, food um, preferences. And so um, the fact that you're able to provide a meal that um, satisfied her, uh, her son's uh, preferences was, was a really big thing for her. And again, thank you to, um, to Edwards Life Science and um, thank you to OCCF. Well, on behalf of Edwards, we feel really fortunate to have been involved in this special program. And we're thankful for our partnerships with OCCF and Mercy House and Illumination Foundation. And this, is, this whole experience has been a terrific example of how our community can come together and really make something special happen. Thank you so much for being with us, Scott and Jacob. And the, the picture you're seeing is of Edwards uh, head chef and their facilities team. And we understand that the entire Edwards kitchen crew is watching with us live today. So we just want to send you our gratitude and our love. And thank you so much for the entire Edwards organization led by a dear OCCF friend, uh, Mike Masalam and your leadership team has delivered for this community all the way down to your entire campus team. So we're so thrilled to have you uh, to have you there. And just in case you hear something in the background, apparently it's trash day in the Irvine Spectrum where uh, <laughs> we are in the fabulous uh, My Media Studios who are doing an amazing job. So just disregard, it's just a, it's a little extra audio. Uh, well, listen, we're going to move now to um, a, a live in-studio dialogue between um, a treasured colleague and a dear friend that leads the uh, arts Orange County. But I just want to say a word about the Orange County art sector before I introduce them. I have been constantly amazed at the way that our arts nonprofits, our artists themselves, have put the community above self at a time when they are suffering, I think, uh, as, as deeply or more so in many ways as any component of our arts, our nonprofit sector. And they have even still prioritized the greater good, the health and safety of our entire community and poured themselves out on the line uh, even at a time when, when they have their own needs that are unfulfilled. And I felt that that deserved some special attention here today. And so, uh, as I said, joining me here live, I'm so thrilled to have my longtime colleague, Todd Hansen, in his 20th year now at OCCF. Todd leads our Center for Engaged Philanthropy, where he works to bring the philanthropic dreams to life for our donors and their families. And with Todd, another longtime colleague, Rick Stein, who is president and CEO of our Nonprofit Arts Council, Arts Orange County. Thank you, Shelley. And Rick, it is really a pleasure to be with you here today. Uh, we've worked with Arts Orange County for so long, and Ricky might not know that I was a budding actor as a kid. I was in many plays, the lead, and I can play three instruments. However, if you've heard me play those, you would know why you're in that seat and I'm over here. <laughs> but uh, we really appreciate you do. And why don't you start by sharing what Arts Orange County does for the community? Well, thanks so much, Todd, for the invitation to participate today. And uh, we've had a, a long, long history together. Uh, Arts Orange County was founded 25 years ago, and Orange County Community Foundation played a pivotal role in its founding and its early years. And in fact, Arts OC's first home was at the OCCF offices. So we are the nonprofit countywide local arts agency for the Orange County community. And uh, we deliver the kinds of typical arts council services that you might see an organization like ours deliver in other communities around the country and around the world. Very much a behind the scenes effort. Although we do have some public programs that some people may be aware of, like the Imagination Celebration Festival or our Veterans Voices Project. Uh, but most of it is really behind the scenes and we work uh, in delivering a considerable amount of professional development opportunities for arts leaders and artists in our communities and our arts organizations. 
Similarly, we are now the go-to consultants and project managers uh, for higher education projects in the arts, municipal projects in the arts, and that enables us to earn some revenue to support the rest of what we do because most of what we do is grant supported and philanthropic supported. Wonderful. Well, we all know how important it is to have your support behind so many arts organizations who you help make this possible. And um, we also know that, as we've been learning today, the pandemic has hit organizations all different ways, but the arts community has hit it particularly um, hard in different ways. So why don't you share how the pandemic has impacted both arts organizations and artists? Well, as we talk today about whether there's going to be another shutdown in our state, the arts shut down on March 16th and they have never reopened. Now, some organizations have been very resilient in attempting to pivot with uh, virtual and online programming, which is never as satisfactory as the social gathering, you know, deeply engaged kinds of experiences that uh, we are best at, at producing and delivering. Uh, so very early on, we conducted a survey of our arts community, and by the second month of the pandemic, there were already more than $16 million in losses, a, a million admissions had been canceled, a third of uh, the staff had been laid off, and 25% of our arts organizations were already dipping into their reserves in order to make ends meet. And um, we uh, took that information and assembled it. And at the same time, we researched what other communities were doing in terms of uh, addressing the needs of the arts community in the pandemic. And uh, already some of our own arts organizations had begun emergency fundraising campaigns. But we knew that there needed to be a more countywide approach. And knowing that need, uh, you created the Orange County Arts and Resilience Fund. Tell me about how that got started. Well, we uh, observed, of course, uh, what Orange County Community Foundation had done in creating the Community Resilience Fund. And uh, in fact, we were contributors to it. Many uh, arts leaders and uh, arts patrons in our community saw that those immediate needs of, of uh, uh, dealing with food insecurity and shelter uh, took priority over anything that we were experiencing at the time. But after observing its success and as it was starting to wind down, uh, I called Shelley Haas and I said, what do you think about creating something similar for the arts? And uh, perhaps we could do something similar in raising countywide private philanthropic support. And she enthusiastically embraced it. And so we worked together with OCCF and Charitable Ventures in developing the fund. Well, tell me what the fund has done. How has it helped artists and arts organizations? And how much did you raise? <laughs> well, uh, we were able to, through a uh, private public partnership, uh, put together, uh, generate more than $2.7 million in resources for our arts community. Through the fund itself, it was $1.1 million. Uh, dollars and uh, almost $200,000 of that came through private sources. But the existence of the fund and the respect that uh, elected officials had for the Orange County Community Foundation and for our own organization led them to invest some of the CARES Act money that they received to address these needs in the arts community. And so we're, we're very grateful for that. Uh, opportunity because I think that uh, it, it's clear at times that uh, the private sector can't do it all by itself and the public sector can't do it all by itself, but by working together, uh, we can uh, exponentially address these kinds of needs. Excellent. Well, do you have any brief stories to share of how organizations responded and helped the community? So uh, initially during that uh, early period of, of first uh, response needs, and we like to say that arts are the second responders because we're dealing with the human impact and people's need to, ha to be resilient and to uh, recover. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, we were approached by a uh, health and human services organization that was desperately in need in, of masks and unable to obtain them during that early crunch. And thank you to South Coast Repertory's costume department. They manufactured hundreds of masks for this entity. Uh, additionally, we saw the Muckenthaler Cultural Center in Fullerton uh, creating free art kits, knowing that parents were now having their kids at home all of the time and having to deliver instruction themselves. Uh, this provided them with some of the tools and instructions uh, to make it possible for them to have uh, arts education experiences for their kids. Um, but the response to actually receiving the funds, we saw in different ways. We have two uh, beloved small theater companies in Orange County, Stages Theater in Fullerton and the Attic Theater uh, in Santa Ana, that closed their doors. They could no longer pay the rent. Uh, they sold what they could. They stored what they could of their props and costumes. They hoped to make a recovery. They received grants and are going to be able, we believe, to eke it out through the end of the pandemic to find a new location and reopen at that time. Similarly, the individual artists, and we, we made grants to 167 individual artists, 137 arts organizations in 27 of Orange County cities. So the individual artist response was, of course, some of them needed it for basic uh, food needs and to pay the rent, but most of them said, we bought the art supplies that we could no longer afford to purchase. This was their, their inner souls that, they, that we were feeding with this, these funds. And their response was, it wasn't so much the money that you gave us. It's that you cared enough that you saw that we mattered. Those are great stories, Rick, of just how the community responds and how philanthropy can help. And the last thing you said about just showing that they matter, it's, it really shows it doesn't always matter the size of the gift. It's just the caring and the reaching out and doing something to help. Well, I know that you have dedicated your life to the arts and just put your heart and soul into that for so many years. And I'm wondering if you have kind of one final thought or idea you'd like to share before we end today. Well, I feel very privileged to be in uh, a world-class arts community. And some of our organizations started over a hundred years ago, like Laguna Art Museum and Laguna Playhouse, which today is celebrating its hundredth anniversary. And I spent 17 years of my life leading that institution. Uh, and others, you know, grew with Orange County's uh, uh, boom times, such as the Segerstrom Center and the Pacific Symphony and South Coast Repertory. And uh, these are organizations artistically that are second to none in the world. And we have every tier and every discipline in the arts represented in this community. Uh, it could not have happened without a community that really cared about the arts because so much of it has been driven by private philanthropy. And the growth of these institutions and the major capital gifts and the new Orange County Museum of Art that is under construction now on the Segerstrom Center campus, these could not have happened without the generosity of, of the people of Orange County. And I just feel so proud to have been living the past 33 years of my life here in Orange County. Well, once again, Rick, thank you so much for all you do for the arts community and for the partnership with the Community Foundation. And I appreciate your time today. Thank you, Todd. I appreciate being here. Anybody wants to know more about us, artsoc.org. Thank you. Thanks. I cannot believe we're, it went so fast that we're at the end of the program already. So it looks like we're going to give you guys a little bit of time back. We weren't sure how the timing would work in this mode. And um, this is a very um, delayed thought that in the very beginning, I should have invited everyone to be engaging on our chat since, of course, we couldn't figure out how to get 
400 little video tiles, you know, up so that you could all see each other. We thought at least, uh, at least you could chat. Now, this would have been much more helpful had I said this uh, at the beginning of the program, but it turns out I peaked while I was listening to Todd and Rick, and you guys have been so active, so I guess you didn't need a reminder. Thank you to all of you. So great seeing all your names come through the chat, and I'll, uh, after we, we wrap today, I'll go and, uh, and just enjoy all of those messages. It just to have the confirmation that we really are together, even though I can't see you. I will tell you, I did ask, and Rebecca can attest, if we could do like the cardboard cutouts like they're doing in the, if you've seen a professional sports game and they have all the cardboard cutouts. So, you know, I said, would that be so hard to do cardboard cutouts of like the ballroom and all the front row tables that I love, you know, looking into your eyes. But uh, I felt you anyway, it turns out. So um, it has been so lovely to, to share this time with you. Now, if you've been to our annual meeting in the past, one thing you know, besides the fact that I never really stick to uh, a script in the first place, is that I never script the closing. I learned back, this is, today is my 21st annual meeting with OCCF. My very first one was in November of 2000. And um, they keep getting better and more, more moving and more dear to my heart with, with every year. But I learned in the beginning not to actually decide how I was going to close because so much always happens in the moment that it would overtake any previous thoughts that I'd had and I would just end up being extemporaneous um, in, in the moment. So I inherited some genes from my, my mother who was uh, a debater and uh, did speech at Cal and, and so excelled in extemporaneous speaking, which I might have gotten maybe some would say too many of those genes, but um, it works well in a, a moment like uh, this. So I always key off of the energy in the room. And I will admit that, um, just between us, I was a little nervous to take that approach today because I am literally in a black box. I'm literally in a black box with a couple of you know production people and my team here. But it's definitely not the 750 beating you know hearts and, and minds that are usually in that ballroom. And I was a little worried that I wouldn't have that same energy or inspiration, but um, but I shouldn't have worried. Uh, it, it always happens, even I guess when we're uh, in being connected virtually. And uh, as we went through the program today, I was thinking about this morning. I always wake up super early, annual meeting day, ready to go. Adrenaline is pumping, and uh, a friend had posted uh, something on Instagram that said, "Wherever you are, be the soul of that place." And it has made me think so much during the program today about how, how deeply connected that is to OCCF's mission. I mean, community foundations, we, we were founded over 100 years ago, were rooted in their place and in service to their communities, to the philanthropists who've made their homes in that place and have become the expert guides and the ones curious to learn about where our greatest needs are and where the most promising solutions are coming from and being that honest broker between people who have the incredible passion and motivation for giving to where their gifts can make the greatest impact, whether that's here in, in their own backyard, across the country or around the world. And to be in that space is such an incredible privilege. And it's a special privilege in Orange County because we are a county of first generation wealth creators. This is not a, a county of people who've inherited wealth, who've been the beneficiaries of other people's success. Almost everyone we work with is not only self-made, but many times were beneficiaries of the philanthropy in their early lives, came from very little. And so they come to our doors with the means and the passion to help other people have an easier road than they had, to build bridges of opportunity for others who might be confronting obstacles that they overcame and they want to give that hand up to the next generation. That is what inspires our work every day and what makes me so grateful to be standing here uh, 20 and a half years into this tenure. It is a role that is a gift and one of the greatest privileges of of my life. And 
you can know that we wake up every day at OCCF, the team, the board, thinking about what we can do better for all of you, what we can do better for our community, what we can do better for our nonprofit partners, what we can do better for the philanthropists who trust us as their guide and their steward of the impact in their lifetimes and the legacy that they want to leave after they're gone. Know that we are dedicated to holding that with the utmost of integrity and stewardship and passion for, for your dreams and your visions. And so um, I did literally just make that up. Anyone who practiced before could say, I didn't say any of that stuff the last time. So it just, it is what it is. I couldn't re replicate it. That's also a thing. As someone says, oh, could you say that again? Nope, it just comes through in the moment. So I guess since we're in this mode, I don't have to talk to you about parking passes and dividing up the centerpieces. Um, I guess your cars just stay in your garage or your driveway and, um, you know, just whatever you've got for flowers, they're just yours, you know, to keep. Um, and so I guess maybe if my last just seconds, moments with you, I just want to leave you with uh, a blessing for, for safety, for health, for well-being, for you, for all those you hold dear in in these continued um, challenging days. I know we're facing what can look sort of like a long winter ahead as we continue battling the pandemic and all that has come to light over this year that has sort of um, embattled our, our souls. And I want you to take comfort and take hope in what you are creating for this community. I was uh, also thinking this morning about the Advent calendar, uh, candles that we would uh, light in my family. So everyone has different family and faith traditions, but we would light the Advent candles that start with hope and then peace, love, and finally joy. And we've seen a lot of reasons to hope today, starting with those beautiful children and, and all the stories uh, that we heard. When I think about peace, I know we've had Father Greg Boyle from Homeboy Industries with us several times, and he always quotes Mother Teresa's teaching about peace, which is that if we have no peace, it's that we've forgotten that we belong to one another. And so my benediction is that you remember that you belong to one another. You belong to us, and we belong to you. And that is the source of our love. It is the source of our joy. And we wish that for all of you, uh, for our country, for our world, and most especially, if I can, if I can say this to our, our, our brave, inspiring, compassionate, innovative, absolutely unparalleled Orange County community. You all truly just take our breaths away every day. And we're so honored to be able to be of service to all of you. So from all of us here and at OCCF and in their homes where they're working remotely to all of you. I want to wish you all the best. I cannot wait until we're together in person again. And I wanna thank everyone who made today possible, including the incredible team at My Media who put up with our relentlessly unreasonable requests up until like five minutes ago. So, um, so, so grateful for everyone who took part in making this a reality today. Love you all, God bless you. Can't wait to see you again. Seasons of Or the way that she died